Hello my design engineering friends. My name is Kevin Kutto and this is my second video in the series of GDNT. In my first video, what is GDNT and why use GDNT? I had put the foundation of this concept and I had explained what are the advantages of using GDNT with respect to coordinate tolerancing system. In this video, we are going to learn about how to read and interpret GDNT modifying symbols or they are also popularly known as modifiers. And yes, if you have not done yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Your subscriptions, your likes, your comments are the only encouragement I have to keep continuing sharing my knowledge with you. So let's begin with our topic. What are modifying symbols? Modifying symbols are those symbols which provide additional information about the drawing and tolerancing of the part. Now, some of the modifiers are specifically mentioned or placed inside the feature control frame. Some of the modifying symbols are specifically placed outside the feature control frame. But there is third category which could be mentioned or placed inside feature control frame as well as outside feature control frame. We have total 22 modifying symbols in ASME Y14.5. 2009. So this is basic nomenclature. I'm not going to go through each one of them. You can pause the video and you can read it yourself. There are 22 modifiers we can see in this picture. In 2018, there is one more modifier which has been added, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but definitely you will hear about this in my future videos. So let's begin with our first modifying symbol, which is at MMC or at MM. Now why there are two different names, okay? Why MMC and why MMP? It depends upon where this symbol M and circled M is placed. i explain with this example. In this example, we see M symbol is associated with the geometric tolerance as well as it is associated with the datum reference. So based upon where it is placed, we call it as MMC or MMP. When the symbol is associated, with datum reference, then the resultant boundary, we call it as maximum material boundary. And when this symbol is associated with geometric tolerance, then the resultant boundary which we are going to get is called MMC, which is maximum material condition, right? Now, let's see with the example, let's calculate uh, maximum material boundary at datum feature B. Why we calculate at datum feature B? Because we have M symbol here. Where is datum, datum uh, feature B? Here. We have datum B here. In this, we know that we have to find out the maximum material condition. So we have first, we have to first look at the size tolerance. 12.1, 12.2 uh, of size uh, tolerances of the hole. And we know that lower tolerance is the condition where we'll have maximum material on the hole. But that's not it. We have a perpendicularity tolerance at maximum material condition. What does it mean? We have to consider the effect of perpen perpendicularity as well. That means 12.1 minus 0.1 is equal to 12 is my maximum material boundary. Now, if I have to calculate the same thing for at C, what would happen? Maximum material condition for a uh, hole is 8.2, lower, uh, lower limit of size. And we have to consider the effect of uh, Position tolerance which is 0.1, so 8.2 minus 0.1, 8, 8 8.1 will be my maximum material boundary at datum feature C. Now let's look at the maximum material condition. Why we have to look at the maximum material condition? Because M symbol is associated with my geometric tolerance. So that means I have to calculate MMC for uh, the whole. Now again I know that 7.7 .7 is the which is the lower limit is will have maximum material on it but i have to consider the effect of position tolerance as well because i have m symbol here so 7.7 .7 minus 0.4 is equal to 7.3 would be my maximum material condition the next modifying symbol is least material condition or least material boundary it is exactly similar to what mmc is only in opposite direction. So I am taking the same example, but in this example, we are going to assume that wherever there is M, we are going to replace it by L. And the reason why I am doing that so that you understand the difference. 
okay so let's look at uh, same thing which we calculated in previous example instead of maximum material boundary we are going to calculate least material boundary at datum feature b now uh, where is the datum feature b here right and instead of m we are assuming that it is l so what is the least material condition here 12.2 and we have to also consider the effect of perpendicular to tolerance because we have l symbol here so 12.2 plus 0.1 is equal to 12.3 this is will be least material boundary at b what about c the least material is 8.4 plus 0.1 which is 8.5 now let's calculate least material condition this what is the least material condition of size 8.1 and the effect of 0.4 that is plus 0.4 and 8.5 will be my least material condition don't get confused with it okay many people get confused with upper limit lower limit and uh, maximum material condition lower uh, least material condition during maximum material condition or least material condition you have to look at the material condition in which condition will have maximum material and in which condition will have least material on feature of cell now let's, let's see next modifying symbol which is a translation which i'm going to explain with this example in this example we have translation symbol associated with datum c what does it mean it means that my datum feature simulator associated with my datum c is not rigidly fixed with my datum a or datum feature simulator of a instead it can translate with respect to my datum b and this will be simple demonst demonstration this is my datum b this is simulator basically this is simulator uh, my datum B is fixed, rigidly fixed, but my datum C simulator can be adjustable. The third symbol is projected tolerance zone. Now, why we should use projected tolerance zone? This will be simple demonstration of it. Projected tolerance zone will be used in the condition where we have two parts assembled with each other. Now, the first part has a thread hole and second part has a clearance hole. And when we assemble these two parts with the bolt, we can have the condition of interference. Now, how to solve this? Because the person who is designing this part may not be aware of the other part. Okay. And that's why in order to avoid this ambiguity, in order to provide, uh, uh, remove this interference, which was here, we use a concept called projected tolerance zone. Now, how this concept work? This is the base, base example of how projected tolerance zone is represented. And we are going to see what does it mean. Okay. So you see here P symbol, right? This P symbol is nothing but projected tolerance zone. And there is a value associated with it. 14 represents the height of other part. There is other part which is a clearance part, right? The height of that part is a 14 mm and that's why I'm projecting my tolerance zone at that height which is 14 mm height and I'm maintaining 0.25 of position tolerance along that height. That's what projected tolerance zone means. Now in some of the cases there is no value associated with P in the feature control frame. But we have to show that value here with the phantom line okay which is 35 what does it mean it means that the height of my other part or tolerance zone is 35 you can mention that in the drawing itself so there are two ways to show it either you can mention it in the drawing itself or you can mention it after symbol p of projected tolerance zone the third symbol is a free state symbol now what is why free state symbol is necessary first of all you can see some of the parts which are where diameter is very big comes considered to its thickness right now by looking at this part you can imagine these parts can flex like this something like this when such big parts are uh, manufactured they are generally constrained right they are generally put into clamps but when these parts are removed when these forces are removed when these stresses are removed there might be some kind of deformation or deflection which is happening into this part so based upon based upon this part is measured without those forces clamping forces or with the clamping forces will define whether it is measured at free state or constraint state constraint state means 
we have to clamp it like what we do in a assembly state now it is represented by a note like this so we, here it, they are telling that you have to uh, assemble these parts with the bolts and then you have to measure this dimension this is called restraining uh, position of measuring the dimension restraining is not the modifier okay uh, you need to represent that by note but free state is a modifier the free state means you have to meet the tolerance value requirement in a free state next symbol is a tangent plane now some of the uh, some of the parts have larger surfaces and it's very difficult to maintain uh, the flatness of the surface in that case wherever we don't need to control the flatness of entire big surface uh, what we do is we use tangent plane symbol which is a t in circle what does it mean it means that a tangent plane passing through the top three points should be within my tolerance zone that's 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 the requirement okay i'm not worried about all the surface to be should be into the tolerance zone i'm just worried about the tangent plane should be within my tolerance zone the next symbol is unequally disposed profile tolerance the name itself says that uh, this symbol is associated with the profile tolerance the symbol is u which is n circled now you can see here in this symbol we have a tolerance value this is a profile of surface and we have symbol of unequally disposed profile tolerance associated with some value which is 0.3 what does it mean the value which is given after the symbol represents that this tolerance is outside the boundary given boundary okay so you can see here for the example this is our given boundary this is our given part but my tolerance value is outside that boundary okay so 0.3 it is separated by 0.3 and my all surface points could lie between these two let's see second example in this example we don't have 0.3 we have zero the tolerance value is same example is same right what does it mean it means that outside i have a zero boundary my entire tolerance is inside why is it inside because i don't have any figure here it is zero that's why i have entire tolerance should be inside of the given boundary and that's why you see there are two planes separated by 0.3 my uh, tolerance uh, plane is tolerance the surface is inside and that's what it is separated by 0.3 right Let's see third example. Here the value is different than this value. This is 0.1 value. What does it mean? It means now in this case we'll have this tolerance zone to the both sides. In upper side, I, as I already mentioned, this value is upper side. So up, upper side it is 0.1 and the remaining 0 0.2, 0 0.3 minus 0.1 is equal to 0.2. So the remaining 0.2 is below that. So that is the simple meaning of unequally disposed profile tolerance. So this represents how much outside and how much inside uh, your tolerance is distributed or disposed now there are a lot of other symbols i'm not going to go in details of everything but we'll see everything in a little bit uh, crisp diameter we already know spherical diameter is very easy it's a diameter of sphere uh, in which you take cross section across which is passing through the center across any angle uh, the diameter which is represented should be shown by spherical diameter so radius we already know very simple then why we have control radius what is the difference between radius and control radius so you can see here there are reversals which are happening that means surface finish is not that great uh, we know the radius is used to uh, cut the sharp edges uh, but in some cases it has a design significance for example in some cases your radius could be a design a function and to reduce the stress concentration we know that radiuses are used to reduce the stress concentration in that case we cannot allow this kind of reversals because that may generate stress concentration and that's why we have to have a very smooth radius which is given by controlled radius now obviously you know that a controlled radius will be costlier to manufacture than radius the next symbol is all over and all around so all around was the old symbol we you we are using from from the ages it represents in the cross section so wherever in which cross section or in which view this has been mentioned it represents only 
that surface but when we use all over symbol means two circles it means that you go anywhere three dimensionally on that part it has to meet this tolerance requirement the next symbol is a between symbol is very easy but this uh, tolerance of profile or profile tolerance uh, profile of a surface i'm sorry is given between point g and h the next symbol is st which is a statistical tolerance now so you can see here static statistical tolerance is given with respect to a geometric tolerance or with the size tolerance if both are okay you can mention it in the feature control frame or outside uh, what is the meaning of that it means that this tolerance has been derived from the statistical method or this is a statistical tolerance next symbol is continuous feature now in this example we know that there are two surfaces which are at the same diameter but they are not continuous they are interrupted okay but still we want to use this entire surface in our application as a diameter so that's where continuous feature symbol is used so what does it mean 22.21 is the diameter of this continuous feature in spite of any interruption the next symbol is square symbol now in this uh, view it is not clear whether this is square or what but when we mention square symbol that means uh, the cross section will be will be square and each side will have 6 mm dimension this is one of the important symbols i which is independency now what is independ independency we know the first rule of gdnt which is perfect form at maximum material condition but in some cases we don't need a perfect form at maximum material condition or least material condition we can override that by symbol independency what does it mean it means that now at 10.8 i don't need a perfect form that is a maximum material condition why 10.8 because it is a maximum material condition i don't need perfect form at max maximum material condition in fact i want to allow a flatness tolerance of 0.5 above this 10.8 that's what it means if this i symbol was not mentioned here what was the meaning it means that my entire tolerance has to be inside this okay inside this but in this case with the i symbol i can allow to override that rule one uh there are other symbols like reference symbol which is very very easy to understand we are using that for ages uh dimension origin symbol this is the symbol from where dimensions are originated in the drawing and we have arc length symbol which is again very easy to understand this is the length of arc so by this time we have covered almost every symbol i am sure that after watching this video you are very clear about uh, the modifying symbols now understand this i have mentioned it at very surface level but uh, this video cannot replace the trainings okay wherever you get chance whenever you get chance Uh, wherever you get chance definitely try to attend the trainings i myself i have attended many trainings in my career i have conducted many trainings for the people and trainings are very effective compared to watching these videos videos can give you little bit idea but they cannot replace the trainings okay so thank you very much for watching this video and happy learning if you have any questions around this uh, you can contact me you can write in the comment box Uh, also you can approach me on kevinkutto@gmail.com